in Christian belief, the guardian angel that's with you your whole life. Um, from a shamanic perspective, we all have an animal or animals that are with us our whole life. And then we also have animals that come into our life just during certain times of our life, like if we're going through a divorce or tough issues in our life, whatever. Animals might come and be with you to teach you. Like if you suddenly have a family of skunks that move in under your front porch or something, <laughs> they're there to teach you. They're, they're being a power animal for you at that time. They're coming there for you. And usually um, power animals are, are animals that we have had a significant relationship with or encounter with in some way. Um, you know, or if you if it's if it's something you just absolutely love, if you absolutely love horses, it's probably a power animal for you. Um, if you, um, well, I'll give an example. I had a friend who was walking through the woods and she had to pee, <laughs> so she went off the path and went into the woods and pulled on her pants. And a squirrel from up above, came on a branch, came down, jumped on her shoulder, ran down the front of her, and ran down into her pants, okay? So <laughs> that's a significant encounter with an animal. <laughs> <laughs> so when those sorts of things happen, there's messages there for you, and you need to pay attention to it. The animals and the plants are talking to us all the time. This year there seems to be so much tansy out there. This year it just is prolific. And tansy is good for repelling insects and all that other kind of stuff. And I keep thinking, what's going to happen that we need so much tansy or something yeah. this year? You know, we need to pay attention to those things. Really get in tune with the environment. We've lost that. Go out in the woods and just sit there and listen. And there's lots of ways on the sheet that you can, you know, work with that too. Just get out there. I, I'm a vision boarder <laughs> and, I, and my vision board's right behind my computer and um, on my computer or on my vision board I have get outside. <laughs> so how do you go about finding your power animal? Well, it can be some an animal that you've had a significant event with, uh, whatever. I do like lead people through a little guided imagery exercise if you want to do that on how to find, on finding your power animal and uh, see who comes to you. Some people are very surprised. Um, and if, you know, no animal or is better than another, everybody wants bears and eagles and, you know. <laughs> well, all is very important and they all teach us something. There is a handout over there that talks a little bit about the animals and what their messages to us might be. There's also books out there. Animal Speak is an excellent, excellent book, and Animal Spirit Guides is another excellent book that just lists all the animals and what their messages are to us. But you know, if you're if you're intuitive, you know, if you talk with your pets and you hear them answer, you can talk to the wild animals too and ask them why are they there and know the answer. Um, and so it's, once you start noticing the signs around you, you'll see that nature is talking to you all the time. We just need to stop and pay attention and know we're connected and open your ears. There's a um, thing on your sheet about walking through the forest and how most, how they say, white people walk through the forest like this, you know? <laughs> Whereas, Whereas an indigenous person would probably go like this. They would go very gently and, and watch and look. And when the first time I heard that and saw somebody walk like that, I thought, oh, I'm really dating myself now, but I thought, oh, that's how Tonto used to walk. Long <laughs> Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, some of you are too young to know what that even means. But anyway. Discover that. Do you have any questions right now? Can you tell me about journeying for someone else? Um, you would never journey for someone else without their permission. Yeah. You would never get information from somebody else unless they asked you to. And if they ask you, it's. I have a friend who's a shaman, and uh -huh. he told me one time, "Why didn't you ask me to journey for you?" Ah. Uh, uh huh. I didn't know that was the, what you do. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what you do. Journey <laughs> for me on that. In okay. fact, my students, whenever they ask me questions, I say, well, why don't you <laughs> get your own 
answer rather than me. You know, you can, that's the thing with journeying is that you can find out your own information. You don't have to go to other people to get your information. And so it's very empowering. The whole idea in shamanism is that we're always filled with all of our power. And this isn't power over anyone. This is your own personal power, your own personal energy. When I talked about having a soul retrieval done, the idea is that when trauma occurs in our life, a part of our soul leaves in order to survive what's happened. Because what's happened so traumatic, you cannot take in the full brunt of it. And so you send a part of yourself away. In psychology, it's called dissociation. Um, but uh, chronic abuse, chronic people who've been abused do that. You know, that's how they say, I send myself somewhere else when I was being abused. That's the only way I could survive it. So when trauma happens in our life, that's what we do. When you have a soul retrieval done, the shaman will go and um, re go find that energy and bring it back and actually blow it back into your body. And uh, so that's to restore your energy. Would that be the same as like going to someone who would do an energy clearing? I've heard of that term before. Well, too. an energy clearing means that you have some blockages usually. Oh, okay. So that's a little different okay. thing. In shamanism, that would be extraction procedures you would do to extract energy that doesn't belong. Thank you. So there were things that were holding you back in your life, say you don't, and you don't know a cause for it. Mm -hmm. Would that be a soul retrieval? Would be a way to, okay. even though you don't know what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. What I do, here's how I work with people. When they come to me, some people will say to me, um, I want a soul retrieval. <laughs> okay, okay. So I journey to my power animals and ask them and my helping spirits, you know, what does this person need? So most of the time, the person knows what they need. But sometimes they'll tell me, no, this needs to be done first before a soul retrieval can be done. Maybe an extraction needs to be done to make room for the new energies or to make the energy safe that, that will be re being returned. And so you always just listen to your power animals and spirit guides as to what the person needs and how that might unfold in the session. And I just make that really clear to people when I work with them. I don't know what's going to happen. Of course, sometimes Having been a family therapist for 14 years, I think I know what they need. <laughs> and as they're talking, I'm thinking, oh yeah, they need a celery too, oh, they need a celery. And then I'll turn to my power animals and they'll tell me, no, <laughs> this is what they need. So, um, yeah, so it works that way. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, now, I'm going to, uh, what's the difference between journeying and, I, I'm, I'm taking in a lot of information and I'm okay. getting confused. <laughs> um, so the, the, she taught, you brought up journeying. Did I miss something? I don't remember hearing what that was. It's a technique where you go to access spiritual information. Okay, it's, like I teach and, or uh, it? it's you you <laughs> you go with your power animal and you travel into another dimension through the sound of the use of the drum at 220 to 240 beats a minute. And the sound of the drum actually puts you into alpha and theta brainwave state, which is where you can have revelations and see things. And you never ever journey without your power animal. They are your protection. They're your protection and they know the other worlds. The shaman journey is in three different worlds. The lower world, it's not heaven and hell. The lower world is the elemental world, where all the elementals live. It looks like our world, it's all nature. And then the upper world is more of a, an ethereal world, kind of heavenly-like thing, where our um, teachers reside. And then the middle world is this world that you're journeying in. And journeying in this world can be a little, um, I don't want to use the word dangerous, a little scary sometimes, because of the earthbound spirits that are here. And so you need to know what you're doing. And you need that protection with you. Help us to find our animal. Mm -hmm. I do a little. Um, it's probably 15 minutes long. I don't know how much time you have. I drum and got, lead you on a guided imagery experience to find your power animal. I mean, I'm just putting mine in a skunk because it sprayed me when I was little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>